Good morning, Carolina Village. Welcome to the fourth session of the Village Vitality series. My name is Aline, and I will be leading you today through a class that is focused on balance. So we'll not only be balancing our physical bodies, both seated in terms of balancing muscle efforts and energies, we'll also be doing some standing balance work and we'll be doing a lot of internal balancing as well. So for today's class, footwear is completely optional. If you are you know, wanting to really practice in your shoes, that's great. But there's something to be said too for being barefoot. We're not often barefoot, just depending on the person. I know a lot of folks tend to wear their shoes even in their house. Um, so you may wanna try this without footwear. I'm gonna keep my shoes on today, but it's totally optional for you, whether you wanna do shoes or no shoes. So make that decision. Make sure you've got your trusty chair for our exercises today. If this is your first time joining, then you'll want a chair that is sturdy, armless if possible, um, and won't slide easily on your floor. So if you have a slick floor that you're practicing on, like hardwood or tile, you may want to um, run and grab a yoga mat or something like that that you can put underneath it so it doesn't slide around. Okay, so we're gonna get started today in centering, seated centering with a pranayama or yogic breathing technique called Veloma Pranayama. And this translated to English is breathing against the grain. The reason why I selected this breathing exercise for today is because it is a wonderful balancing breath. So it balances our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest system, lowers our heart rate, lowers our blood pressure, lowers our breathing frequency. We balance that with our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight and flight system, our stress, adrenaline, increased heart rate. So with this breathing technique, we can get those, the expression of those two nervous systems to, in essence, balance. Um, it's also interesting because the breathing technique promotes a sense of ease and then also a sense of energeticness. Um, so again, balance. And also the reason why I really like this technique is because it increases our oxygen saturation, which is essentially the percentage um, of hemoglobin that binds to our red blood cells. So increasing that is excellent. That can help decrease our breathing frequency and decrease how hard our lungs have to work to get oxygenated blood through our body. So enough talking, let's practice. So coming to our seated position, if you've been with me from the beginning, you know that means coming to the edge of your seat, being active and engaged. But remember, if that's not an option for you, or maybe just today, you're just not feeling that you're going to allow yourself to be supported in the chair, but just try not to have this closed down posture. You wanna to try to be as open and lifted as possible if you're gonna use the support of the chair. And remember throughout our centering as we're working on this breathing technique, if you start getting too tired and notice this happening, go ahead and scoot on back. So if you can start out, perch to the edge of the seat, knees hip width apart and then heels under the knees rooting down through the feet whether you're wearing shoes or not let's take a few inhales to just feel like we're lengthening and lifting through the crown of the head maybe even roll the shoulders up back and down with our veloma pranayama today we'll be doing some visualization as well. So definitely want to close the eyes whenever you're ready. Let those eyelids get heavy. And first, just take a moment to scan the internal environment of your body, of your breathing. Just tapping into how you feel today in this moment right now could be different than how you felt when you woke up. 
So just take that time now to observe. And as you sit here observing your natural breath, begin to envision your torso as some kind of vessel. It could be a cup, a vase, a pitcher, just some kind of vessel for receiving maybe what you'd think of as or visualize as water or energy or air or life force. And with our breathing against the grain technique, it's helpful to envision as you breathe that you're filling this vessel from the bottom down. So just like you would pour water into a cup, it fills at the bottom and then works its way up. And we'll do that same thing with the breath. So as you draw your next inhale in, pull it down deeply into the lungs until you feel your belly expand and then your ribs and then your chest and collarbones. And as you exhale, imagine that vessel is emptying Exhale, collarbones, then ribs, then belly. Inhaling, filling belly, ribs, chest. Exhaling, emptying chest, ribs, belly. You might even envision as you breathe that vessel filling with whatever you would like to bring into your life. Gratitude, love, kindness, healing. And as you exhale, emptying chest, ribs, abdomen, you're sending that and out into the world, sharing it with others. So continue breathing like this, inhaling in those three parts without really pausing, without forcing too much, just doing your best. Filling from the bottom up and then emptying from the top down. Try to take three more breaths like this. One more breath. And then allow yourself to release this technique. And just returning to normal deep breathing. And keeping your eyes closed or blinking then open. Go ahead and bring the palms together. Interlace the fingers and send those arms out in front of you. We'll be moving seamlessly the breath and the body. On your next inhale, start to lift the arms any amount overhead, belly presses forward, chest presses forward, chin lifts. And on your exhale, take the opposite movement with the spine, navel presses to the spine, chest lowers, head lowers, arms move parallel to the ground, drop the chin to the chest, empty out. Inhale, fill, lift, open. 
Exhale, close, tighten, and empty. Take about four or five more breaths, cycling through this version of cat and cow at your own pace. Creating as much shape change as you can, as long as it feels good to the body. Remember the most important thing you can do today is listen to the body. Observe the breath. And slow down, back off, or stop if anything doesn't feel good to you. One more exhale. And on your inhale, lift and relax those arms. Continuing to move the spine and move breath and body. We'll work into some twisting now. So an inhale sends the arms straight out in front and exhaling to open out to the sides. Now, if at any point arms out is too intense, you can do this with the arms. The lower they are, the easier it'll be. Deep inhale in the center here. On your exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Again, you can relax the arms a little bit. Let them come lower. For a little less intensity. Exhaling to twist. Inhaling to center. Move at your pace, your inner rhythm of breath and movement. One more twist to each side. And relax back to center. Take an inhale to roll the shoulders up, down, and exhale to roll them back. Go ahead and see if you can clasp your hands now behind you. This may be enough effort. You might not move very much in this. We're going to do what's called locust pose, seated locust pose. Try to roll those shoulders back and down. Open that heart forward. This may be enough of a stretch for you. But if you're able to, on your inhale, just opening the heart, see if you can straighten the arms, see if you can lift those hands away from your back. And on your exhale, relax that stretch. Inhale, lift, open, and fill. Try to send those arms back any amount. And exhale, release. Let's do that twice more. Inhale to open. Exhale to release. One more time, deep breath in. Fill that vessel with vitality. And exhale to release. Good. Relax the arms. And we'll take a vinyasa here, a little chair yoga sequence. On your inhale, float the arms up and overhead. On your exhale, let's pause here. Breathe. You have options. For a little more challenge, you're gonna exhale, hinging forward with the arms remaining overhead until your belly reaches your thighs and you release the hands. For medium challenge, you'll do this with the arms, what we call in a swan dive position. So arms out by the sides, hinging forward and down. And for a little less challenge, Hands are gonna trace along the thighs and all the way down. Now, either way, we're trying to maintain a straight back 
as we fold until we get to that point where we then need to round. So let's come back to it. Join me here. Decide where you want to go. You can always change it up if you regret your decision. So we'll inhale. I'm going to show arms lifted for this first fold. Exhale, hinge forward. To our seated forward fold, our Uttanasana in Sanskrit. Here, notice my head is relaxed and dangling. I'm going to go ahead and roll my shoulders. Turn my head side to side. Just let myself loosen up and hang. Stretching out the back, shoulders, neck. Breathing into the back of my rib cage here. On your next inhale, start to lift the head. Sometimes if we've lowered that head below the heart, it can make us a little dizzy coming up. So let's lift the head, start to engage the back muscles. Bring those hands up to the thighs. On your next inhale, lifting all the way up. Arms come back overhead. On my exhale, I'm going to open my arms out and back as much as possible. Grabbing the backs of my chair. I'm going to inhale again to open up any amount more. Just back bending after that forward fold to bring balance to the spine. And exhale to release. Here on an inhale, drawing that left knee into the chest. I'm going to grab underneath the thigh, behind the knee. I'm going to start to circle. If I can, I'm letting go with that right hand just so I can get more range of motion. It may mean that you'll have to activate that leg a little bit more, but that's okay. We're just trying to warm up the hip joint and the muscles that connect there for our next movements. Go ahead and reverse directions. Still remaining tall and lifted through the crown of the head as if a little string is helping you, just pulling you up to the ceiling. One more circle. Extend that leg out and release the heel down. Inhale to lift the arms. Keeping that heel on the ground, we're gonna exhale to tilt back into half boat pose or navasana. And then inhale to come back. So exhale, notice I'm keeping that length in my spine. I'm trying to keep the belly and chest pressing forward. I'm feeling powerful engagement here in the core. And then I'm backing off. Exhaling to tilt back. <sighs> Inhaling up. If I need a little less, maybe my shoulders are getting tired or I need more support because my back is rounding, I'm going to bring those hands behind me. Still getting a good challenge, but listening and to and protecting the body. One more tilt. Let's see if we can hold it this time. Either arms out in front or arms behind for five. Don't hold your breath, though. Three, two, and release. Go ahead and take a deep inhale here. On your exhale, start to hinge forward until you feel that nice, lovely stretch in the back of the thigh. Try not to place this left hand on the thigh. It'll cause that knee to lock out. So we wanna place both hands on that right thigh. And I'm just gonna hinge forward again, trying to fold my belly towards my thighs, my chest towards my knees, just to maintain that spine in neutral. And here, perhaps allow the eyes to close. And with each inhale you take, think of the things that you would like to bring into your life, the things that you would like to attract. And when you breathe out, sharing that with the world. Two more deep breaths here. 
And when you're ready, an inhale slowly starts to lift you up. Beginning to drag that left heel back under the knee. Sending the arms down by the sides. We'll take another vinyasa or flow sequence to do the right side now. So remember your three options for your forward fold, either arms overhead, arms in swan dive position, or arms hands on the thighs. I'm gonna demonstrate the swan dive this time. So take a deep inhale, arms lift all the way up no matter which way you're going. On your exhale, you start to bring the arms down Fold forward and fully release here. So allowing those arms to dangle. Maybe this time if it's accessible, you can reach to try to grab the opposite wrist. You could even try grabbing hold of the legs of the chair to deepen your stretch. But listen to your body. If your body is saying, whoa, that's too much, then that's when you need to back off. Shake that head to loosen it up. And as you feel ready to come up, if you're holding the legs of the chair or holding your wrists, go ahead and let go. Bring those hands to the tops of the thighs. Start to lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Re-engage the back. Inhale to come all the way up. Arms lift. And on your exhale, arms come down, out, and open. This time, if you'd like a bit of a deeper stretch for your back bends, the palms can face out as you hook them on the back of your chair. Inhale to open, belly and chest press forward, chin lifts. And on your exhale, let go of that back bend. Next inhale, right knee comes into the chest and holding either with both hands or one, starting to circle out, around, and down. Find your deep breathing here. Find the length in the spine, that little string pulling you up. If only that was actually there, it would be very helpful. <laughs> And go ahead and reverse directions of your circles. Deep, full breaths here. And when you draw that knee into your chest again, go ahead and extend the leg out, heel to the ground. Deep inhale to lift the arms to about shoulder height. Or remember, arms can come back behind you. Or you can do a combination of the two. Maybe you start with arms out, you start to get tired, and you bring arms back. Deep inhale here. On your exhale, you're hinging back, keeping that long line of the torso. <sighs> Inhaling to come back up. Exhaling, tilt, boat pose or navasana. Inhaling up. Let's try that several more times. When, when I bring my arms back behind me, I'm trying to use them as little as possible. It's just so that I can maintain that straight back, but I'm still trying to powerfully engage my abdominals. Two more. For the last one, I'm going to bring my arms back up. And hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Deep inhale here. Both hands come to that left thigh. Exhale, start to hinge forward into your hamstring stretch. So I'm just inching forward until I feel that stretch in the back of the thigh. Trying not to let this knee lock out. I want to keep it a little bit bent. 
And then here I'm trying to find release wherever I can on the body. Relaxing the jaw and the eyebrows, relaxing the shoulders. Just enjoying the stretch. Maybe not enjoying it so much, but it is wonderful for your body. <laughs> Next inhale, start to lift slowly up and slide that foot back in. Now we're going to try a little bit more of our balance work next. I'm going to turn my chair, but you just stay right where you are. We'll be working with warrior poses for this next little sequence. So I'm going to march on over to my left side. I'm gonna hold the back of my chair here while I position my body just so I'm supported and I don't have to worry about losing my balance. So I'm keeping my left foot rooted onto the ground. I'm gonna send my right leg out and back behind me. Now I started with my hips pointing in the same direction, but now I'm opening my hips to the front of the chair. So you might not be able to get as open as this. Doesn't really matter what it looks like, honestly. It just matters that you're holding your body in a good anatomical position. So what I'm shooting for with my back leg is that my foot is rooted to the ground as much as possible. So I don't wanna be rolling onto the arch of that foot. I wanna try to get the whole base of the foot down. It is gonna be a stretch for that back ankle. Back leg as straight as I can get it, if possible. And then the front leg, knee, always over the ankle. So I can keep holding the back of my chair here if I need to. But if I feel that I can do it, I'm going to try to send those arms out. So stretching out in the same directions as my legs. Warrior two, our Vira Bhadrasana two. And I'm going to invite a little bit of movement here. So I'm going to bring that right hand to the hip. I'm gonna try to float that left arm up. Now remember, if balance is an extreme issue for you, or maybe not, it doesn't even have to be extreme, um, you might wanna hold on to this chair. So I'll demo holding onto the chair first, and then I'll demo a couple times without. So join me in this little back bend, open the chest up, send the gaze up. And on your exhale, you're going to lean towards the front leg Keep the chest open to the front and send this other arm on top. So I'm creating a nice long line with my leg and my arm for extended side angle. Inhale up to my back bend. And exhale, sweeping that top arm up and around side angle. If you're able to, we'll do this a couple more times together. If you're able to, left arm will lift. And then elbow to thigh for that extended side angle. Or if you're very flexible, maybe hand to top of the foot. But don't overdo it. One more time each way. Maybe you're holding onto the chair with this arm. Inhaling and exhaling. Everyone inhale back to warrior two. We'll hold here, strengthen the legs and the arms. What I'd like for you to try to do, even if you're holding on to the chair with that front arm, is energetically try to press into the feet as hard as you can. You'll notice all of the muscles and the legs start to activate a bunch more and you might be able to lift away from the chair. If so, hold here or maybe you whew, lower it down and lift. Either way, everyone's activating whether you're lifting or not. Two more breaths. One more lift if you're lifting. 
and exhale to release. Relax the arms. Take this back leg, slide it to meet the front. Go ahead and march those legs to center. And then let's go on over to that right side. So we gotta balance it out. <laughs> So I'm rooting down through my right foot. I'm gonna hold on to the back of my chair while I'm making all these adjustments. This left leg, I'm gonna send it down and out to the side. I'm letting those hips open. I might wanna shift to the very edge of my seat here. So play around with your positioning on the chair to find what's most comfortable for you. My goal is the back foot is fully planted on the ground. So good stretch for the ankle, good strengthening for the ankle. Trying to straighten that back leg if I can. And trying to open the hips and chest forward. If I can, I'm at least sending my back arm out. And then maybe here if I feel stable and balanced enough, I'm bringing that front arm out as well. Finding warrior two. And we'll take those, that breathing sequence of back bending and forward bending. And I'll demonstrate first with my arm down, holding onto my chair. So I'm going to inhale into my reverse warrior back bend. And I'm going to exhale into my extended side angle. Inhaling up. Back bend, and don't worry if you can't do this in one seamless breath. That's a lot to ask. So you may have to take a couple breaths, but initiate that bend here on an exhale. Initiate the lift here on an inhale. So now I'm gonna demo the last two with both arms. Exhale, side angle, remember elbow to thigh, or if you're pretty flexible, hand can come to the top of the foot. One more time, each direction. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, come back to warrior two. See if you can hold it here. We're gonna take several breaths. So be nice to yourself. You may need to lower the arms. You may need to bring that front arm to the chair for support. If you can, whether you're lifting or not off of the seat, I want you to really powerfully activate those legs and thighs, press into the feet. Maybe you lift, maybe you don't. Maybe you hold here for the next few breaths, or maybe you're gonna release and then lift. Either way, front knee stays bent, whether you're lifting or not, or holding, or doing none of it. <laughs> One more deep breath. And exhale release awesome job guys go ahead and bring that foot forward walk those feet to center take any kind of decompression movements you need to we're going to come to standing for a little bit of balance work before our cool down so remember if you've been with me for the last couple classes you know you have some options coming up to standing of course you can stand up any way that you normally would out of your chair but if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you're gonna try chair pose with me. So from here, you're coming to the edge of your seat. You're walking those feet underneath the thighs. So knees are more or less in line with the toes. There's space between my feet. They're hip width apart. I'm hinging forward, leaning those arms forward, pushing my weight forward into my feet slowly coming to standing. The slower I come to standing, the stronger I'm going to get. Deep inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale, join the palms together in front of the heart. Just tap into that heartbeat for a second. 
If you feel okay doing so, you can even close your eyes, but be aware that that makes balance a little bit harder. On an exhale, release those arms. And let's come around to the back of the seat for a little bit of balance work and one more stretch before our final relaxation. So for this balance work, I'm going to be either facing the chair with both my hands on the chair. If I know my balance is pretty good and I want to test it a little bit more, I'm going to turn sideways to the chair. I'll demonstrate both. So we're going to do what's called tree pose in yoga or vrikshasana. My feet are hip width apart. I'm going to bend that right knee and shift my weight a little bit into my left foot. Now we've been practicing a lot of hip opening, opening out to the sides. I'm going to try to externally rotate that knee and bring my toes right in there next to my ankle. So this is level one, let's call it, for tree pose. And I'm just gonna turn sideways so you can see that better. So I started with the knee bent, opened it out to the side, and I'm almost creating a little kickstand here for my balance. So from here, I could try lifting my hands away. That chair is right there. I can grab it if I need to. If my balance is pretty good, maybe I'm bringing palms together in front of the heart. Again, knowing that chair is there if I need it, if I start to fall out of balance. Now, what can be very helpful when you're balancing is to pick a point of focus somewhere in front of you kind of beyond looking out at the floor or some object. The more pinpointed you can get, the better for your balance. Um, and don't try to look at me because something that moves isn't really that great to look at. So try to pick a point, find your focus there. Now, if you'd like to challenge yourself even more here, you can try sliding that foot to the calf. Don't bring the foot to the knee. That's terrible for the knee joint, so we don't want to go there. Again, maybe testing the balance, maybe not. Remember, you might be facing your chair here. If you fall out of it, maybe you've fallen out of it five or six times already, totally fine. Just keep trying to come back to it. We're training those muscles, training the mind-body connection creating that muscle memory, neurological memory for our balance. When you've had enough, if you haven't already stopped yet, go ahead and on an exhale, bring that knee back to center and release that foot. Shake out those legs, maybe circling the hips or rocking the hips side to side or any other movements that feel good to you to get ready to do our other side. So again, if you're facing the chair, this time you're starting to shift the weight slightly into the right foot as you bend that left knee. Open that left knee out to the side and slide that foot in so that your toes are pretty much right there next to the ankle. So I'm going to turn my chair so you can see me better. Again, you can be facing the chair or you can be sideways to the chair just like I am right now. Try the balance here. Maybe just one hand comes maybe out forward, out to the side. Play around with it. Where do you feel most balanced? And if possible, you're trying to do both hands. Maybe coming back to the chair if you need it. Picking your focal point, your drishti. And perhaps here, if you feel pretty solid, or if you're holding on and you just want a little bit more, foot comes to the calf. If you're barefoot right now, you're really gripping with each individual toe, even if you're not barefoot. 
gripping, holding, but at the same time trying not to be too, um, too caught in a tension pattern. Effort and release, effort and release. We're trying to balance those while we balance. When you're ready to stop, draw that knee in, release that foot, shake it out. One more stretch here before we relax. We're going to do a wide-legged forward fold, just wonderful for a lot of the muscles that we worked in class today. So I'm gonna be facing my chair, both hands on the chair. I'm gonna start to walk my hands, or my feet back. And then I'm gonna walk my feet open. So I recommend start out small with your feet just a little wider than shoulder width or a little wider than the width of the chair. Toes are pointing forward. And then I'm gonna just push my glutes back and drop my chest down until I feel a stretch all in the backs of my legs and in my inner thighs. If you don't feel very much, try to widen. Heel toe those feet further out or and or further back. So find your sweet spot, that point where you get to and you're like, oh, yep, that's the stretch she's talking about. And just hang out there. Try to relax as much as you can. Allowing the body to receive the stretch. And go ahead and if it feels good, you might wanna bend into one knee and then the other, just shifting that stretch around in the inner thighs and outer thighs. Coming back to center. Come out of this very slowly. First start to lift the head. Then you're going to try to heel toe. So heels, toes, heels, toes. Walking my feet in. Making sure I'm not dizzy. And if I am, I'm still holding on to the chair. And I'm waiting however long I need to before I let go. All right, so let's come back to the chair to get that last bit of relaxation in. So I'm gonna go ahead and have a seat. I'm gonna scoot on back for support in my chair. And today I think it would feel really nice to have one palm in the other in my lap to relax. I'm gonna straighten out those legs a little bit. I'm gonna take a deep breath and on my exhale, ah, I'm just gonna let it go audibly. Let's do that together three times. Deep inhale, exhale, ah, two more times, just let it out. Ah, one more releasing breath. I'm gonna allow my chin to drop slightly to my chest, but not letting everything lean forward. So I'm still staying in pretty good posture. Just letting the head relax. Eyelids become heavy and close. And just allow the body to feel heavy and supported in your chair. A 
Allow your body to just breathe on its own without force or effort. Notice all the points of your body that are in contact with the floor and the chair. And then all the points of your body that are in contact with the air. Observing the differences in sensation. each exhale you take, relaxing a little bit more fully. See if you can observe a sense of duality, of heaviness as you relax, yet lightness in the joints that you opened up. Finding a sense of balance in the body. Next inhale, begin to breathe a little deeper, beginning to move on the inhales, your fingers and your toes as if you were breathing life and movement back into the body. Lifts your back away from the chair, lifts the arms overhead. And exhale, joining the palms together in front of the heart. Just pausing here for a moment in observation, in gratitude, in love. When you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. And relax the hands. And take your time to come out of that space of relaxation. And I hope that your bodies, minds, and spirits enjoyed the movement today. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, requests for next time, reach out to me, call me or email me both. Stop by my office. You can ring the little doorbell. If I'm there, um, I'll come out and answer. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.